journey of becoming. And as we officially launch this program today, we want to listen to the man, have a foretaste of this GCK King Circle. Right now, I introduce to you Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, the man who will be sharing daily nuggets to young people across the world. Listen and remain blessed. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, tonight is not about me, it's about you. I come to lift up the VIPs of the hour. I come to take mediocres out of the dungeon of failure, and I want to take you to the mountain top of mastery tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you. You are the God of young people, the God of children, the God of teenagers, the God of young adults, and the God of young professionals. I pray today, anyone in the dungeon of mediocrity, you lift them up, you move them up, and they come to a miracle place in life that will be permanent in Jesus' name. And I pray the miracle of upliftment that you do tonight will never be reversed in any life in Jesus' name. Move everyone up. Higher. Higher. Higher than they have ever been in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth a prize? So run. So run. Run in such a way. Run on the right track. Run with the right speed. And run with the right knowledge. And run with the goal and destination in front of you. Run, don't wobble. Run, don't just say, be like a physical. Run, don't just walk as if you are in leisure. Run, so run that he may obtain. That's what we're come to today, that we can take up this challenge and understand that life is a race. Education is a race. Profession is a race. Personality, developing a good personality that will make a mark in the generation in which you live is a race. Everything about our lives, character, charisma, competence, courage, everything we try to have, we have them so that they will help us to run the race of life. And every day we are running. There are people like us having almost the same talent. Almost the same upbringing, almost the same opportunity, almost, almost the same goal that we have, they have, they run, we run. But we arrive at different destinations because of who we are, because of what we concentrate on, because of what we decide to do with our lives. So run that ye may obtain now. You cannot run with your neighbor's legs. You have to stand by yourself. You cannot run with your neighbor's energy. If you're going to run, 
any way if you're going to run in the physical, in the moral, in the spiritual, in the profession. If you're going to run, you have to use the legs that God has given you. It's giving us brain, a mind. It's giving us heart. It's giving us a soul. It's giving us personality. It's giving us everything we need to run. But then you have to make up your mind, I will run. That's not enough. I will so run. I have a destination. I'm talking about you. I have the path that leads to the peak of the mountain. And then I, anything I'm going to have is not going to come from outside. Am I going to run? Feet are not going to come from outside from another person. Am I going to run? The vision and the eyes I have and the focus I have will not come from other people. Am I going to run? The energy and the determination for me to get to that destination is not going to come from anybody. Everything is inside here. And so I gather everything together and I so run, I concentrate when I run. I search my goal when I run. I look at the place I'm going. I do not allow discouragement or despair or whatever it is uh, to pin me down. I keep running. So run that ye may obtain now. It's what you obtain that shows the evidence you have been running. If you don't obtain anything, you know, and you just say, I've been running, I'm doing my best, I'm going through life, I'm trying to achieve, I have determination, and I'm running. It's what you achieve that speaks for you. It's where you get to that speaks for you. It's the result of what the running you are talking about is that one that will justify you have been running so run that ye may obtain you will obtain that's why you came here forget the crowd think about yourself and myself one on one that your life will be taken up by God, by God. You will rise up. You might have fallen. You will rise up. You might have been be reaching up. You will rise up. You will start where you are now. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. In a few months, in a few years, you'll be there. So run that ye may obtain. Look at verse 25. Every man... That strives for the every man that strives for the mastery. There are people that do not strive for the mastery. They poke nose into other people's lives. They poke nose into what does not concern them, their own life, their own destiny, their own goal, and their own desires. They do not nourish. But when a man wakes up, you are waking up. Everything that is dead or dormant in you will wake up tonight. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Is temperate in all things. That's what temperate means. It's moderate. It's controlled. Is subdued, is very selective. It says, uh uh, that will not add to my goal. I brush it off. That will not lift me up to the peak I'm going to. It takes that up. That happens to everybody. The athlete that is running has to understand that will help me, that will not help me. That food will help me. That drink will not help me. He ought to understand that 
he must be temperate in all things. Now, did you eat to obtain a corruptible crown, but we and incorruptible? Your life will be incorruptible, and your destiny incorruptible. In life, as you take this word to heart, you will run, and so run, you will be unstoppable. The first thing you need to realize is you have the chance and the calling to run, and nobody can stand in your way. I said nobody can stand in your way. I want you to understand that you should connect with me as I connect with you. As if you are the only one I'm mentioning before the Lord and the answer is going to come to you. There is one thing definite that nothing on earth Nothing from hell can change. Today is the day of your miracle. You are moving up out of that sickness. Out of that oppression. Out of that difficulty. Out of all those things that have tied you down. From your brain to the blood your nerves, your joints, to every part of you, your soul, your spirit, your body, a divine touch is coming upon you. And Jesus says unto you, if you can only believe, all things are possible to you because you believe. If you are raising up your hand for prayer, it's because I believe. I believe. I believe. Lay the other hand where you have the problem. If you don't know where it is, just lay it on your chest, on your heart. Because you believe, there will be no disappointment in your life. Father, we thank you. We have assurance. You are a loving Father. You are a mighty Father. You are a compassionate Father. And you are an impartial Father. You love everyone. You want to bless everyone. Lord, I connect everyone with your power in Jesus' name. The sickness the disease, whatever the name may be. Lord, I pray at this time, be healed in Jesus' name. Mental problem, occultic problem, problem because of powers of darkness, I cancel it from your life in Jesus' name. incurable disease, weakness, whatever. I pray, Lord, you touch everyone without exception. Heal them now in Jesus' name. Deaf, dumb, blind, crippled, lame, arthritis, whatever, swollen tummy, swelling any part of the body, whatever lord i pray touch them right now miracle miracle miracle healing deliverance turning around transformation possibilities in every life in jesus name manifestation in every life Operation of power in every life. Confirmation in every life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done in Jesus' name. 
you got it. I said you got it. Check up yourself. Go your miracle is there. GCK King Circle, become a world changer for Christ. GCK King Circle, devient an agent who changes the world for Christ. GCK King Circle, be Yeshu Masih ke liye dunya badalne wala baniye. GCK King Circle 的意向是为基督改变世界。GCK دائرة الملك هي مبادرة جديدة مصممة لتجهيز وتمكين الشباب حول العالم. I want to announce to you today you are candidate for success. And as I go, you follow, you go. As I grow, you follow, you grow. As I glow, you follow, you glow in Jesus' name. Your chance, your opportunity, your season has finally come. It's the season of GCK King Circle. Become a world changer for Christ. Мировой крусейд пастора Кумуи, круг царя. Станьте тем, кто изменит мир ради Христа. Circle, dos reis, reinamos com cada mensagem ouvida. The GCK King Circle is a new initiative that is designed to equip and empower youths and young adults around the world. The program will feature daily episodes of teaching and training from Dr. W. F. Kumui. We are excited to announce that the GCK King Circle will be premiered globally on November 7, 2023. Join us to make this lunch a success. Look out for it. From November 7, 2023, coming soon on your social media platforms and channels across the world with inspiring life transforming words from dr w f kumui i can't wait it's our time for every young people wherever you are say it it's our time gck king circle become a world changer for christ Yes, and you have heard the man, the man with a message, the man on assignment, the man anointed, so electrifying, exciting, empowering, inspiring. That's the purpose of the messages of GCK King Circle. You are welcome to a new day. I acknowledge the presence of great youth leaders worldwide, gentlemen of the press, and all partners and supporters of the initiative of the great man of God, Dr. W. F. Kumui. There is a great man in our generation who is committed to the gospel which has dra drastically changed the world. I am excited. I'm a, I am electrified. I am thrilled. The convener of GCK and the executive director of GCK King Circle, the person of Dr. W.F. Kumui, has a priceless message of great value for this and coming generation. As a professor, I represent the intellectual community and understand the value of ideas. And those ideas from Dr. W.F. Kumuyi had brought me to the pedestal I attain today, and I am not the only one. As a man, young at heart, and of course, like my father, I represent the youth and recognize the place of young people in nation building. They are critical change agents, transformators better than the greatest discover gpt and we shall give the messages all the visibility it deserves in the marketplace of ideas vibrantly and viral focused and forceful intentional and intensive dynamic and beautifully that is what we are going to do we, we shall use all innovative and creative vibes 
to spread the great message of Dr. Kumuyi on the internet <laughs> where we live every, every hour, every second. We'll be cool about the message. We'll be committed to, to his global spread. We will and will with all our will. And I'm not alone. Now, let me give space to some global leaders, lover of youth, media houses, and organizations. Help me welcome one of them, Mr. Emeka Izezi, a media guru and a media executive from Africa. And he has led quite a number of organizations in Nigeria, Africa, and in the world over. What has he to say about this great initiative of Dr. W.F. Kumoyi? Mr. Emeka Izeze, the whole world is hearing you. You are welcome. Now, uh, Mr. Emeka Izeze, can you unmute? Uh, because yes, the whole yes, world yes. hear you. You are good a lover of you. Good evening, you are in good afternoon. Good morning, everyone, wherever you are in the world. My name is Emeka Izeze. I have been uh, in the media for over three decades. My professional practice has, um, at the highest level, have taught me that there is no greater imperative in the world today than for dealing with the needs, spiritual and physical, of the youth population of the world. And you can find no better man to power this project than Dr. W.F. Komoe. is a man who breathes and thinks youth. Here is a man so passionate about his spiritual well-being about the physical upliftment of young people all over the world. And it is impossible for you not to be enraptured by his enthusiasm for the young population. A man that never ceases to excite the young. And now a man bent on inspiring the young all over the world to do great things to change their lives, to change their focus, to change the direction that many thought was their calling. And as I said, it is impossible from my experience to resist the pull of this project, GCK King Cycle. It's a transformational journey, and it's a journey whose time indeed has come. I stand here as representative of the media in Nigeria. Maybe I should even add Africa to assure you all that the media here will not only publicize GCK King Circle, but will help to realize its lofty objectives. And I pray that by the grace of God, we will do as we have pledged. Thank you very much for listening to me. Back. The media authority says it all. The guru has spoken. You better believe for your good. Let's come on train. And I know there are other who are excited to share their goodwill endorsement of this initiative. Of the Let's hear them. Oh, Hello, I'm Steve Warnicke from Senders NFL NG Media Group, and I'm excited to share some fantastic news with you today at NFL NG. We've had the privilege of working closely with Global Crusade with Kamui GCK. 
we proudly brought Dr. William Kamui's teachings to 11 TV stations across the United States, spreading his message far and wide. And now, we're thrilled to embark on a new journey with Dr. William Kamui on the GCK King's Circle, the latest addition to Dr. Kamui's inspiring offerings. This new media product promises to take us to even greater heights in our mission to share his life-transforming message. At NFLMG Media Group, we're honored to stand by Dr. William Kamui as we continue to bring his vision to the world. Together, we'll create a positive impact that resonates far and wide and reach the world of young adults for Jesus Christ. Pastor Kamui and church family, this is Jerry Mastroni as part of the Life Zone team. I wanted to take just a moment and congratulate you all and pray this special blessing of Deuteronomy 111. I'm praying a thousand times more of Deuteronomy 111 on you, the body of Christ and pastor and team. And we bless you for investing in this next generation. And we know the fruit of it is going to be amazing. So blessings on everybody. We look forward to hearing about the fruit back here in Dallas. Thank you now. And y'all take care. Bye-bye. Greetings. This is Nancy Mastroni from Dallas, Texas in the United States of America. It seems like it was just a few months ago I was uh, working and co-hosting with Life Zone TV and we were launching GCK Daily. Um, what a great success that has been. So today I'm thrilled to be here again to uh, witness the launch of TKC. What an amazing program this is, reaching out to the youth in the nations of this world. Um, they're starving for affection and attention. I just want to bless you, Dr. W.F. Kamui, and your ministry, your wife. I greet all of you in the name of Jesus, and I, I just speak a blessing over this new program in Jesus' name. Yes, and excited. They have spoken, the sages, the adults, those who have benefited from his ministry, and they are authentic testimonies. It's all inclusive. And if the aged can bear testimony of the values, of the benefits, of life transforming ideas, thoughts, messages, ministration of Pastor W.F. Kumuyi. It's a very great one for every young people all over the world to come into that circle. Let us all come to this circle of the king through global crusade with Kumuyi and the king circle that is meant for you and I. Teenagers, college students, intellectuals in tertiary institutions all over the world, young adults, all climbing the ladder of executive and professional work in life. You have nuggets, you have ideas, you have principles that are ageless, that can transform life. This is what GCK King Saku is inviting you to, and we are inviting everyone. How will it run? You have the ideas, you have the nuggets, you have the motivation. Every day, early in the morning, while you wake up, it is coming up fresh to you from the oven of a man who has connection with God. Through his ideas, through his ministrations, through his empowerment, on successful ideas that can give transformation in every facet of life, morals that can give transformation everywhere. We have come to this level we have come to. Come on, let's rise up and join in this great initiative of Dr. Dr. W.F. Kumuyi and be part of the children of the king. Kings and queens, come on, let us join him, and it's going to be a wonderful time for all of us in life. I welcome you to the GCK King Saku.
God bless every one of you as you join this great train all over the world. We spread the message everywhere on all social media, and we populate it. The greatest news of the time that can give the world peace, joy, and happiness. GCK, King Saku, everywhere, let it reverberate with all vibrancy and vigor of our youthful energy. I welcome you. Thank you, Pastor W. F. Kumuyi. And God bless your ministry to our generation. And what a day, what a time, and what an impact we have received from this online World Press Conference on the GCK King Circle by the great initiative of the convener of GCK, Dr. W.F. Kumui, whose passion for young people of our world is high and towering. Youth, college students, campus students, and young adults, and professionals all over the globe, you are uniquely blessed. And I implore you to key into this wonderful program of the man of God, Dr. W.F. Kumui, for your lives, preparing you as great leaders of this generation. We appreciate all our dignitaries, our media influencers, as well as journalists who have graced this occasion with your online presence today. Thank you very much. My plea is that you spread the news to all nooks and crannies of the globe for the youth to take advantage of being taught, trained, and branded as unique species for God. The executive producer of the GCK King Circle, Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, wants it to become a household product for all youth of the world, and of course, all members of every family. Our appreciation goes also to our fathers in the faith, tonal coordinating overseers, national and state overseers, who have backed up this project with their prayers and support. Thank you. Kindly put your weights behind the global spread of GCK King Cycle through our youths, campus students, young adults, and professionals in your churches and places of influence. Youths, once again, this is our time. Yes, I say it again. This is our time. We cannot wait again till tomorrow morning for the first edition of GCK King Circle to stick out of its shell into the different social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and others from 6 a.m. What? 5 GMT worldwide. Join the teeming population of youth globally. To treasure it, taste it, trade with it, transform lives through it, triumph with it, and turn your world right side up for Christ. It will be done. Special announcement and invitation. This conference is going to nose dive into the Monday Bible study to be handled shortly by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi. I invite all our dignitaries on board, journalists, media influencers, and all our invitees to join us to enjoy the study with us right now. You cannot miss Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi as he teaches the Bible study expositively, systematically, precept by precept, line upon line. 
verse by verse, we need to dig into him today. As you join us, God bless you richly. Thank you all for being part of this today. GCK King Circle, become a world changer for Christ. GCK King Circle, devient an agent who changes the world for Christ. GCK King Circle, Yeshu Masi ke liye dunya badalne wala banye. GCK King Circle de mission shi, wei ji du gai bian shi jie. GCK Daerat El Malik, iya mubadara. I want to announce to you today you are a candidate for success. And as I go, you follow, you go. As I grow, you follow, you grow. As I glow, you follow, you glow in Jesus' name. Your chance, your opportunity, your season has finally come. It's the season of GCK King Circle. Become a world changer for Christ. Мировой крусейд пастора Кумуи, круг царя. Станьте тем, кто изменит мир ради Христа. GCK King Circle, convierte-te en alguien transformado del mundo para Cristo. Circo dos Reis, reinamos com cada mensagem ouvida. The GCK King Circle is a new initiative that is designed to equip and empower youths and young adults around the world. The program will feature daily episodes of teaching and training from Dr. W. F. Kumui. We are excited to announce that the GCK King Circle will be premiered globally on November 7, 2023. Join us to make this lunch a success. Look out for it. From November 7, 2023, coming soon on your social media platforms and channels across the world with inspiring life transforming words from dr w f kumui i can't wait it's our time for every young people wherever you are say it it's our time gck king circle become a world changer for christ gck king circle become a world changer for christ gck king circle Devient un agent qui change son monde pour Christ. GCK King Circle me Yeshu Masi ke liye dunya badalne wala banye. GCK King Circle de mission shi, wei ji du gai bian shi jie. GCK Daerat El Malik, iya mubadara, jadida musammama li tajiz wa tamkin shabiba haoul al alam. Je veux t'annoncer aujourd'hui que tu es un candidat pour le succès. Et comme je vais, tu emboîtes le pas et tu vas. Comme je crois, tu emboîtes le pas et tu crois. Comme je brille, tu emboîtes le pas et tu brilles au nom de Jésus. Votre chance, votre opportunité, votre saison est enfin là. C'est la saison de GCK, King Circle. Devenez un agent de changement pour Christ. Mirabui Crusade, pastor Akumui, Kruk Tsaria. Stante tiem, kto izminit mir, radi Christa. GCK, King Circle. Convierte-te en alguien transformado del mundo para Christ. Circo dos Reis, reinamos com cada mensagem ouvida. GCK King Circle, c'est une nouvelle initiative conçue pour équiper et outiller les adolescents et les jeunes adultes de par le monde. C'est un programme fait d'épisodes quotidiens d'enseignement et de formation du docteur William F. Kumuyi. Nous sommes ravis de vous annoncer que GCK King Circle sera officiellement lancé à travers le monde le mardi 7 novembre 2023. Rejoignez-nous pour faire de ce lancement un véritable succès. Préparez-vous, ce sera le 7 novembre 2023 et bientôt disponible sur vos réseaux sociaux et sur tous vos canaux digitaux à travers le monde avec des paroles inspirantes qui changent et transforment les vies venant du Dr. William F. Moui. Nous avons à car c'est notre temps jeune. Où que vous soyez, dites-le. C'est notre temps. GCK King Circle. Devenez un agent de changement pour Christ. GCK King Circle. Nesi vichin dunyai de istram biro. GCK King Circle. Become a world changer for Christ. 
député Tim Circle devient un agent qui seul commande pour Christ. Bugün size şunu duyurmak istiyorum. Siz bir başarı adayısınız ve ben giderken takip ediyor, gidiyorsunuz. Ben büyüdükçe takip ediyor, büyüyorsunuz. Ben parıldadıkça İsa adına parlıyorsunuz. Senin şansın, senin fırsatın ve senin zamanın sonunda geldi. Şimdi GCT King Circle zamanı. Hristiyanlar için dünyayı değiştiren ol. Мировой крусей пастора Кумуй, круг царя. Станьте тем, кто изменит мир ради Христа. Cinco dos reis reinamos com cada mensagem ouvida. GCK kralının çevresi dünyanın dört bir yanındaki gençleri ve genç yetişkinleri donatmak ve güçlendirmek için tasarlanmış yeni bir girişimdir. Programda Doktor Kumi'nin günlük eğitim ve öğretim bölümleri yer alacak. GCK King Circle'ın dünya çapındaki premierinin 7 Kasım 2023'te yapılacağını duyurmaktan heyecan duyuyoruz. Bu öğle yemeğini başarıya ulaştırmak için bize katıl. Doktor Kumi'nin ilham veren Hayatı dönüştüren sözleriyle 7 Kasım 2023'ten itibaren dünya çapındaki sosyal medya platformlarımızda ve kanallarınızda çok yakında karşınızda olacak. Sabırsızlanıyorum. Bizim zamanımız geldi. Gençler nerede söylerseniz söyleyin bizim zamanımız geldi. GCK kralının... Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The third book of Moses, called Leviticus. The third book of Moses, called Leviticus. Chapter 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water, as for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all his hair, 
and wash himself in water that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off. And he shall wash his clothes, also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth deals of fine flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and one log of oil. And the priest that maketh him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean, and those things before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall take one he lamb and offer him for a trespass offering and the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest's, so is the trespass offering, which is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil, and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And of the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. And the priest shall offer the sin offering, and make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. And afterward he shall kill the burnt offering, and the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the meat offering upon the altar. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be clean. And if he be poor and cannot get so much, then he shall take one lamb for a trespass offering to be waved, to make an atonement for him, and one tenth deal of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, and a log of oil, and two turtle doves for two young pigeons, such as he is able to get and the one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering. And he shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering, and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, to make an atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer the one of the turtle doves, or of the young pigeons, such as he can get. Even such as he is able to get, the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, with the meat offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the Lord of him in whom is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which pertaineth to his cleansing. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, it seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go in to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean, and afterward the priest shall go in to see the house. And he shall look on the plague, and behold, 
If the plague be in the walls of the house with hollow strakes, greenish or reddish, which in sight are lower than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. And the priest shall come again the seventh day and shall look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again and break out in the house, after that he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that it is shut up shall be unclean until the even. And he that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes, and he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague hath not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house healed. And he shall take to cleanse the house two birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And he shall kill the one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood, and the hyssop, and the scarlet, and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. And he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water, and with the living bird, and with the cedar wood, and with the hyssop, and with the scarlet. But he shall let go the living bird out of the city into the open fields, and make an atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law for all manner of plague of leprosy and scall, and for the leprosy of a garment and of a house, and for a rising, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean, and when it is clean, this is the law of leprosy. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the... administrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
seen, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He filled my soul with love, and brought my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. A little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles, hear our faintest cries, and so by and by, feel a little prayer will turn in, know a little fire is burning, find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my way is red without a ray of hope, and just a little cloud of doubt creeps for the day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the sunlight skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles, hear our faintest cry, answer by and by, feel a little prayer will turn in, know a little fire is burning, find a little talk with Jesus makes it right.
Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. India beckons. I from injustice to indomitable by Christ. And from narrow-minded to nurturing milk from Christ. D from dissolution to a decisive decision for Christ. I from idleness to independence through Christ. A from abject poverty to affluent possessions in Christ. As GCK this November offers you full redemption through Christ. From India to the world, bringing salvation, solution, and liberty through Christ for all. Every yoke it will break. All the shackles it will shatter in Jesus' name. November 23, 228, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily. Full redemption through Christ for everyone, everywhere. Ministers, church workers, and professionals will gain speed as they will receive the great fundamentals of ministry in three special days, November 24, 27, and 28. And on Saturday, young people all over the world will be elevated at Impact Academy. It will be the divine creation of heroes from zero. You follow, you go. As I grow, you follow, you grow. As I glow, you follow, you glow in Jesus' name. A life-changing experience awaits you at full redemption through Christ. Live at GCK locations across the globe. And live, their satellite and all our social media platforms. The man of God, anointed international evangelist and convener of the GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kui, will minister Christ with power along with all the ministers from India. This is GCK. It is the gospel to every creature. Until they become born again, follow up has not started. Be thou diligent. It's like he's talking to one person. Thou, yourself, take the message as if this is just coming to you. Take the message as if the standing of the believer. And the strength of that new convert depends on you and you alone. And you are diligent. Be diligent to know the stage of thy flocks. Not only of one convert, not only of two converts, of the flocks. First of all, you have to know. If you don't know the need, how can you meet the need? If you know, don't know their challenges, how can you answer those challenges? If you don't know what they're going through, you never interact with them, and you never see them, how do you know what they're going through without diligent? Then to you know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy flocks. You see, Paul the Apostle was not able to get everywhere because he evangelized quite a lot. He went to this city and that city and that city. And it was uh, impossible for him to follow up on everyone. Therefore, he sometimes sent other people to stand in for him, to represent him, uh, and then to know the state of the flocks over there. I know that person is going to be diligent. If I were there, I'll be diligent. I will know the state of the flocks. I will know their spiritual experiences. I will know where they are standing. I will know where they are weak. I will strengthen them. And these fellow were proved to be diligent in many things, but now much more diligent. Our diligence in follow up must be scriptural. Scriptural. You see, there are people who just say follow up, follow up. And we're asking ourselves, what's follow up? And who are the people we're following up? We're following up newborn babes in Christ. And the same thing, a follow up, we need to understand. There are people who say they are Christians, and then we we'll say we're following up on them, we're following up on them, and then we we'll say they're not responding. And what's the matter with them? They're not responding. And we do follow up. And then we say, sir, look at uh, all that we're, di we're diligent. And as we're diligent, we run after them. We teach them. We do this. We do this. And yet, they're not responding. You know what? 
The people you are to follow up are those who are truly really born again. The other people who are not born again, you are not following up on them. You are teaching them repentance. You are teaching them, you are evangelizing them. You are telling them what it means to be born again. When we say we are following up, what do you do? How do you follow up somebody? How do you disciple somebody? What are the things you are going to share with them and you, as you are going to them? What is it that you are going to emphasize? We are discipling them and then we make sure they are truly really born again. In the scriptural sense of discipleship, we nurture them on commitment to the Lord. Commitment to the Lord. And that's what we are doing. You say you are following up on somebody and you are following up on them so that they are committed, completely committed unto the Lord. That's the purpose, that's the essence, and that's the progress, and that's the process of the follow-up. You want them to cleave to the Lord, not to depart from the Lord, not to look back again, not to compromise, and not to backslide, but to cleave to the Lord. Our follow-up should make sure we tell them of the essence of making heaven on the final day. What was the point of follow-up? You know, I've been spending my life on that individual. I've been spending my resources on that, uh, on that family. I've been spending my skill on those groups of people, but they're never holy. And if Christ comes, they're not going to make it. And then you've wasted the whole of your resources and you've wasted your life. Remember, be diligent to know the stage of thy flaw. Where do you work? What do you do? What, how do you make your money? How do you trade? How do you do your marketing? And in all those areas, in their family life and everything, you're teaching them that there should be holiness unto the Lord, holiness in the presence of the Lord, because holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. As you are doing the follow-up, you are looking diligently about yourself, about your own personal life, and about the lives of the people you are following up, you will not be a source of defilement. You will be a source of strengthening in Jesus' name. And everything the Lord has given you to do, the power, the courage, the backbone, the authority, the anointing to do, will overflow in your life. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray that the Lord will help us, that we will disciple Christians, as well as multiply the church of the living God. The Lord has spoken to us individually. He has spoken to you as a pastor. Spoken to you as a worker, a Christian worker. Spoken to you as a member of the church. Pray for grace. Grace to be diligent in so winning. The year is coming to an end. And you've never won a soul. Are you comfortable? How will you meet the Lord empty-handed without one soul with which to greet him? Pray. Ask God to help you to know the spiritual state of your flock. The flock in your church location. The flock in your house. You are biological children. And many of them are born again. What efforts are you making to ensure you don't perish? You don't get lost? Are you are aware that their blood will be required from your hand? If you allow them to perish without rescuing their soul, pray for grace to know their needs. Pray for wisdom to know their challenges and assist them. Remember, he that winneth soul is wise. We are wise making money. We are wise in pursuing our academic career. We are wise in doing so many things, but in so winning, the wisdom is lacking. 
pray for wisdom to win souls. Are you committed to follow and discipline of converts? We have met so many converts from the GCK. Even this last month, GCK. What's your effort? What's your plan? What's your strategy to ensure that the souls are conserved? Pray and consecrate your time, your talent, your treasure, your training to visit and help the new converts to have genuine Christian experiences. Don't easily give up. Pray for grace. Pray that God will give you resilient spirit to win souls. Conserve converts. Promise the Lord you'll be committed to scriptural follow-up, not casual follow-up. Embarking on it just to fulfill all righteousness or just to silence your conscience. Pray for grace to add value to the lives of the converts you are following up. Ask God to assist you to care for them, make a lasting impact in their lives. Disciple them to abide in the faith. That is the reason why God chose you. That you should bear fruit and your fruit will remain. Pray also that your converts will be committed to the Lord. Cleave to him and make heaven at last. Pray that the Lord will sustain you with his grace. Keep you holy, undefined and faithful in discipling Christians and multiplying the church of the living God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We worship you for the privilege we have to pour our hearts to you. We pray, Lord, you give us the grace and wisdom to win souls. And as we do that and cause joy in heaven, your name will be glorified and the church will be edified. Thank you for having answered our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, Amen. we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for bringing us together. We thank you because you are a great God, a mighty God, a glorious one, a majestic one. I will ask you, oh Lord, that tonight you open the pages of the scriptures to every heart in Jesus' name. We are asking, Lord, that you turn every life around. That there will be something that will happen of great, tremendous benefit in every heart, in every life, in every family, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the young and bless the old. Amen. The men and the women, the brothers and the sisters, the leaders and the workers and the members. Oh Lord, bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep us awake Amen. and awaken everything within us, spirit, soul and body in Jesus' name. Amen. Let life in all areas come into everyone. Yeah. Eternal life, yeah. abundant life, yeah. spiritual life, yeah. a life that makes us really looking into the word of God and then being prepared for the coming of the Lord. Yeah. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. We're coming to John chapter 11. And in chapter 11, I'm looking at it from verse 39. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Master, the sister of him that was dead, says unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he had been dead for days. Jesus says unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. And he still said the same thing to every one of us today. That if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. That means if you believe, thank God I believe. 
And as you believe, it says that faith in believing the Lord will lead to you seeing the glory of God. Verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Understand? He had not even asked. He has not even prayed. He has not even made the request. But he knew that the Father will listen to him and will hear him. He always did the thing that pleased the Father. And the Father also will always respond to him in a pleasing way. And so before he prayed, before he made the decree, before he made the proclamation that Lazarus should come forth, he said, Father, I thank thee already because thou hast heard me. Look at verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me. How often? Always. Every prayer of Jesus is always answered. And when he comes to live in your heart, and he reigns in your heart, and you give him the chance to reign without a rival in your life, the time will come when every prayer of yours will be answered in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 42, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, everybody, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. He had to come forth. The word of Christ must be fulfilled. And whatever it is, the stone that is rolled over the grave, and whatever it is in your life, the word of Christ must be fulfilled. Tonight it will be fulfilled. This year, everything the Lord has promised you, and you have said, Oh Lord, you promised me this, you promised me this, the Lord is going to fulfill His word for you. Yeah. And so the Bible says very clearly here that Lazarus actually came forth. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grip clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus says unto them, loose him and let him go. Looks like God is talking about you tonight. Loose him and let him go. That was a great miracle. And you're going to find out that the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ actually manifested forth his glory. His glory as the only begotten son of the Father. The Lord Jesus Christ had been with the Father from all eternity, before the beginning of the world. He had glory with the Father, and the disciples beheld his glory. He did what no other man had ever done. As you look through the Bible, no man has ever done this that Jesus did. Actually, as you look at John, the Gospel according to St. John, the miracles they recorded were special miracles spectacular miracles, supernatural miracles of things that no other person had done even before the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it will show you and to show me that Jesus Christ actually had glory. And those miracles manifested forth the glory of Christ. Look at chapter 1 of John. John chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. You see that from the very beginning of the gospel of John, he tells us that the reason why this is written is so that you will behold his glory. you see that glory tonight. Amen. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Look at chapter 2 verse 11. In chapter 2 verse 11, talking about the manifestation of the glory of Christ as it performed all those miracles. Chapter 2 verse 11, it says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth, tell me, 
his glory and his disciples believed on him you remember when we read chapter 11 of john at the beginning when jesus told them that lazarus was sick he told them the reason why he'll be going there chapter 11 of john we're reading from verse 4 when this sickness is not up to death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Master, that he might be glorified thereby. And so you understand, whatever problem, whatever challenge, whatever crisis may be in your life today, God is going to have glory. He's going to solve that problem. It's going to heal that sickness. It's going to take that calamity away. That disaster will not continue in your life because you're going to see the glory of God. I will see the glory of God. Look at chapter 11, chapter 11, verse 40. It says in verse 40, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Very simple. To see the glory of God, only believe. And as you believe, whatever it is you are brought here as a problem tonight, you believe in the Lord, glory. Somebody shout glory. The glory of Jesus will be manifest in your life in Jesus' name. And we're looking at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And here I'm reading from verse 40. In John chapter 12 verse 40, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see what their eyes. He's talking about the unbelievers, talking about the Pharisees, talking about the Sadducees, and understand not with their heart and be converted, that I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. That he said Jesus having glory is not a strange thing. In the Old Testament, Isaiah, when he saw the coming of Christ, the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, the ministry of Christ, the death and the resurrection of Christ, he looked ahead and he saw the glory, the glory that was to come of the Lord Jesus Christ. When did he have this glory? How long had he had that glory? Look at chapter 17, John, chapter 17, verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory, look at this, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before the beginning of the world, before the creation of the world, Jesus had been in heaven because he's eternal. The Son of God, eternal. And because of that, he had that, that glory before any angel was created, before any man was created, Jesus had been. And he had this glory with God the Father in heaven. One of these days, you'll be in heaven and you'll see that glory. Look at verse 24. Verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. It's talking about the believers getting to heaven. It's talking about the believers after you are saved, you continue with the Lord, and you are sanctified, you are made holy, because without holiness, no man shall save the Lord. When you remain like that in the grace of God that brings salvation and teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws and to live soberly in this present world, and then you accept that experience of being redeemed from all iniquity and you are purified in peculiar person unto the Lord. When you leave this world, you'll go to heaven. Amen. I'm talking to somebody there. I say, when you leave this world in holiness, you'll get to heaven in Jesus' name. And then he says, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. You see then that Jesus Christ had glory, and that glory manifested forth. And today, as you come to Christ, and you look at Christ, and you behold Christ in your heart and your life, you will see that it's going to manifest that glory in your life. It will transform your life. It will change your life, and you'll become like it's a radiant, a glorious life in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, but we all. How many of us there? We all. I said how many of us? 
Every child of God, if you are born again, every child of God, you have turned away from your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. You see that you're looking at Christ, you're learning from Christ and you're beholding his life and you're beholding his sinless life, his spotless life, his righteous life and his life that was heavenly and you're beholding that as in a glass. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord you see what the lord is saying there he's saying that when you behold him and you see him then